Hey guys, it's Mart, back with another video, and today we are collabing with Llama Freak, and uh, yeah, I'm doing the background, so this is my side, this is the little piece that I did for our collab, and uh, then if you want to check out his side after it's done, he did the character on top, and you can see the final result of both of our efforts at the end of this video, and at the end of his, so uh, yeah, I guess I'll just do the normal thing where I just talk about how I got to the final painting, and uh, yeah, I'll just get into it. So, I started off with a really basic color palette, and um, it was really dull, and I didn't really like it, so I made a lot of adjustments to the original color palette, but um, I like the composition, so I kept that. Um, pretty consistent throughout. But you can see I darkened it up, I added a lot of blue, and uh, here I am going even further with the amount of blue in the piece, and um, I added a lot of color and overlay layers to get just the right values and colors that I wanted just to start off and, you know, get the feeling right before I sort of detailed everything. There you go. I changed a lot of the lighting here. I darkened up basically everything and then I lit up the stuff that was um, near the like hole in the wall and uh, tried to get all that lighting right. And then I tried to sketch everything out to try to maybe color in the lines, make the process easier, but I actually like painting a lot more so I ended up just scrapping that. It didn't really help. so. Um, I just painted everything and just went with it. You can see I'm detailing all the grass, sort of figuring out how that's all going to be work and be lit. And you can see I also detailed and added a little bit on the vines near the hole in the wall. And um, now I'm detailing the foreground, which is just grass. It adds a little bit of depth and also sort of adds to the sense that this place is really, really overgrown and abandoned for a long time. You can see I've got a painting within a painting there <laughs> to the right along the wall. That part of the composition was kind of empty, so it needed something. And a, I think a tilted and uh, old faded painting or portrait. I kind of try to make it look like a really, really non-detailed portrait. So, um, but anyway, I thought that would sort of liven it up a bit, or deaden it up a bit, I guess, in this case. <laughs> and then you can see I added a crack in the wall there, and then soon I'll add another one similar in the uh, top right near the painting, because that's another sort of dead spot in the composition. And then from here on out, I've sort of laid out everything that I want to have in the piece and I just have to detail everything and get the mood just right. I'll eventually lighten up the gap outside the window or the hole in the wall to kind of make it more like outside is like cloudy and and rainy but it's still really bright compared to in here because you know it's all dark there's barely any windows it's like rubble everywhere and the normal light sources aren't working because humanity has vanished from this part of this the whatever world that this painting is from. You can see there's still a lot of trace warmth in uh, the painting from way earlier and I wanted to try to get rid of as much of that as possible because like it's being lit only by this one cool light source, and the warmth wouldn't really make much sense in this case, and it kind of takes a little bit away from the mood, so I'm trying to only warm it up when the material itself, like the wood or the dirt, is actually warm. One kind of cool thing is that 
you see the table and the door and the uh, wood and the broken wall. All of that seems kind of brown because of the contrast with all the colors around it, but really it's just a dark magenta and it's really weird to play around with this kind of color palette and make everything fit in. You can't just find brown and just use that. You have to figure out what brown looks like in this kind of lighting and this type of environment and use that and play around and the process is really interesting. There I am just figuring out all the light on the vines. Those are kind of hard because they're like tubes, like weird dangly green semi-transparent tubes that are just all over the wall over there and it's hard because the light source is kind of coming straight in and they're against the wall so you can't really decide how much light is getting there and how much light is not really being affected by the vines and then you made and there you see I made some more adjustments just to you know boost that light and darken the darks even more to kind of emphasize that that is like the one and only light source and kind of draw attention to that and also sort of it keeps everything together because the light source is kind of the the focus but also where the light is being cast like that empty spot by the door and the, the place in the the middle of the composition is eventually where Mama's character will be put, so I wanted to make sure the light was casting there and that the light was enough of a focus that it will make sense once there's a subject there and it's not just an environment. And there you see I added those cracks and now we're done. That's it. This is Llama's part added as well. And uh, this is only part one. Up next week is actually uh, him starting with a character and then me trying to build an environment around it. So if you want to see that, come back next week. If you want to see his side of the collab from this week, then head over to his channel. If you want to just check me out, hit one of these links under the thing that says check me out. And uh, yeah, thanks so much for watching and I will see all you guys in the next video. Peace.